Great. Welcome to our webinar. My name is Elaine Chang. I'm the Senior Manager for Global Market Development for TerraWorks. And I'm super excited to be presenting this next TerraWorks webinar on how Grameen Foundation has digitized their farm certification process. Let me go into the next slide. Great. Um, just by way of introduction, um, we're joined by Grameen Foundation. Um, they were founded, in, um, founded and inspired by the work of Nobel laureate Mohammed Yunus. Their mission is to enable the poor, especially women, to create a world without hunger and poverty. And they do this by focusing on agriculture, financial services, health, and providing tools for strengthening organizations. So in today's webinar, we'll be focusing on their work that combines agriculture with technology. In terms of the M Agriculture team's work, they pioneer the community knowledge worker model, which arms local farm, uh, local farm leaders with knowledge that they can share with other farmers in their community. And their overall um, philosophy is that they work to increase farmer income by providing better connections uh, to the, the value chain and getting better information to the farmer so they can increase the quality of their yield and ultimately their income. They work on um, lots of different programs with different partners um, and have included mobile technology as a, a core piece of these uh, programs. So in terms of today's webinar, we'll be focusing on uh, farm certification as a, an important way for farmers to be connected to the value chain and increase their income. So Carlos and Hannah, um, will be giving more details about how they've taken existing certification processes and digitized them so that um, their partners have up-to-date information. So Carlos Ardila is based in Colombia and is part of the technology team for Latin America um, implementations, including for M Agriculture. And Hannah Rubio is also on the technology team, uh, is based in Manila in the Philippines. Um, and works on the Philippines projects. So before I turn it over to them, I'd like to go over some housekeeping rules. Um, and while I do that, I'm just going to open up a quick poll. So hopefully you can see um, the polling questions. Um, feel free to enter your uh, answers there. Um, so in terms of housekeeping, this session is being recorded. Everybody is on mute by default. Um, but if you have a question, please raise your hand and I can unmute you. Uh, if you do that, please introduce yourself, your name and your organization before you ask your question. You can also type your question into uh, the Q&A section of the uh, WebEx interface. And I think that's it. So let me close this poll. Let me just share this. Looks like there's a mix of people who are using mobile technology already and um, those who are not but interested or here for some other reason. Yeah, good mix of a uh, bunch of people. Um, okay. Great. I think that's it for me. So, um, Carlos, let me hand it off to you. Carlos? Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, hey, hi everyone. This is Carlos, uh, and I'm very excited to be part of this webinar. And I'm sure that we are going to enjoy, to enjoy this interesting session. Let's go to the first slide, please. Okay, what is the Grameen Foundation and my objective? It's to improve the income and livelihood of small farmers. How we accomplish it? Gather timely 
easy and cost-effective information for analysis, decision-making, and continuous improvement. Diagnose levels of production, compliance with good agricultural practices, and productivity sustainability, connect farmers to market and increase their visibility to financial service providers, and a very important part of our work with farmers and what we will be discussing today is how we facilitate compliance with certification standard. Even internal audits and international certification seals. In the next slide, we will see what is a certification and why do it. For farmers, certification is a pathway to increase their household income. When a farm is certified, the farmer has demonstrated that he or she has adhered to a standard production, processing and transportation criteria set by, set by a certifying body. Certification organization set different criteria for compliance. For example, organic certification will require adherence to a specific standard such as avoidance of the use of chemicals and genetically modified seeds, while fair trade requires assurance that the working condition is safe, healthy, protects the environment, and empowers community to build strong, thriving businesses. Oot is a program and label for sustainable farming. There are many important certification programs, such as Rainforest Alliance, Coffee Practices, C4, Bone Sucre, and Marine Stewardship Council. Let's go to see the certification components in this slide, okay. Typically, we have four components to the certification applications we create. There are observe, evaluate, recommendations, and monitor. The first one is observe. Using surveys created in Tarworks, extension work at visit the field, and through observation and active dialogue with farmers, record day observations. The second component, evaluate. The information collected in the surveys will coincide with the data points needed for assessment by the certification program. Our application automates the evaluation process. Depending on the certification program, this evaluation will result in degrees or level of compliance or no compliance. In addition to the pass or fail results, we can develop the third component, that is recommendations, which are actions or activities that the farmer can take to be in compliance with the certification requirements. Often, we develop plans which which extension worker can discuss in details with the farmers. In some programs, we leave a calendar of activities for the farmer's future reference or integrate with a reminder system using IVR or SMS that will prompt the farmer at critical times. And the last component, monitor, while we won't go through monitoring in detail during this presentation, it is an important component of the certification process. Here, we repeat the observation step, but using surveys in Tarworks that are pre-filled with areas that need improvement and particular attention of the farmer and the inspector. In the next slide, we will see what will we cover today. Using organic certifications, we will go through our use of Tarawars and Salesforce to assess, assist, and track farmers in our, link, in, in our farmer link program in the Philippines. We will briefly look at our implementation program in Colombia to describe how we put farmers at the center of multiple certification programs in the coffee value chain. First, Hannah will take us through the certification program incorporated into the FarmerLink program in the Philippines. So go ahead, Hannah. Thank you for, very much for that, Carlos. 
For us to understand why and how certification was used in TireWorks, let me provide a brief background on the FarmerLink program. What is FarmerLink? FarmerLink envisions to build resilience among smallholder farming households by achieving food security and increasing their capacity to become reliable market players in the value chain. Currently, we work with coconut and cacao smallholder farmers who are among the poorest in the Philippines, with 60% of them living at or below the poverty line of 440 US dollars per year. What are we trying to accomplish with certification? Part of the solution components of FarmerLink is to improve farmer productivity and to help farmers gain direct access to markets. Having the farmer certified is one of the ways to do this. For organic certification, we identify different players that have a role in the whole process. First one is the farmer, which has to be identified if interested in undergoing the certification process. For our private partners, we have the field agents who does the registration and inspection officers who conducts the internal inspection process. Supervisors and manager oversee the field activities and results, as well as coming up with the list of farmers who will undergo third-party certification. And lastly, the third-party certification body that does the official inspection and certification. Next slide, please. So what do we want to accomplish? Grameen has worked with our private partner in the program to digitize part of the certification process. We started with organic inspection and re-inspection. The current process involves use of manual written forms. The process could be quite subjective as it is dependent on judgment of inspection officer. From inspection, there is a need to encode the manual forms. Because of this, you would expect delay between inspection and results in the head office. Next slide, please. Given that a huge portion of the certification process actually happens in the field, TaraWorks works well offline. In this mode, the user can continue data collection and still have visibility to locally stored information about the farmer, the farm, and his practices. Once back online, the application can synchronize with central servers to push information collected in the field and to pull any necessary program or data updates to the handset. Next slide, please. The Salesforce and TireWorks backend component, on the other hand, works well for viewing reports and dashboards based on the data collected on the field. This ensures that data gathered in the field is utilized fully and timely. Having this set up also makes it easy for new survey content to be developed and pushed to the agents and officers on the field. Next, please. The start of any development in TireWorks and Salesforce begins with planning of how data will be represented and what the flow will be. For the organic certification in particular, it starts off with agents registering the farmers. Next slide, please. When farmer identifies himself as interested in undergoing organic certification, or if the private partner has, has identified certain farmer for certification, the inspection officer conducts the inspection. If there are risks of non-compliance identified, farmer is informed of corrective actions which should be done and will be checked on the follow-up pre-inspection, which typically happens in the following two weeks. An example of this non-compliance is improper waste management, such as burning or application of synthetic fertilizer or herbicides. Next, please. As mentioned in the previous slide, the process starts with farmer registration. The output for this is the farmer profile which gives us farmer information such as name, age, details of the family, financial information, crop information, agricultural and land information, 
Progress Out of Poverty Index, and Good Agricultural Practices. Let me pause here for any questions our participants might have. Go ahead and raise your hand or feel free to um, chat your question. And you can do that throughout the presentation as well. Let's see. Doesn't seem like there are any questions, Hannah. Okay. okay. Go ahead. Okay. So let's start with details regarding the digitization of the organic inspection. Next slide, please. Um, next. As mentioned by Carlos earlier, we typically have the four components observe, evaluate, recommend, and monitor in the certification process. We will go through how these components were created in TireWorks and Salesforce. Next slide, please. As part of the observation component, objects and custom fields were created in Salesforce to map out answers from the TireWorks survey. For evaluation, we created formulas which output assessment based on values from observation. The farmer is assessed for major risks if the nonconformity will take a long time to resolve and affects a huge percentage of the farm. An example of this is use of seedlings treated with synthetic chemicals. On the other hand, farm is assessed for minor risk if the nonconformity affects a small percentage of the farm and can be corrected within a short period of time. An example of this is incomplete record keeping. If there were, non, if there were no non-conformities identified, farm is assessed as no risk. For recommendation component, formulas for corrective action were created based on matching risks. For example, if farmer was assessed as minor risk for improper waste management due to burning, the corrective, the corrective action is stop burning. Instead, practice mulching or composting of crop residues. Next slide, please. We build the organic inspection survey, keeping in mind to utilize sections to make survey review easier to read. Questions with relation to risk assessment must not be open-ended and can be used for skip logic. Utilize skip logic to only ask significant questions. For example, if farmer does not do intercropping, questions related to intercrop should no longer be asked. This will save time for the person conducting the survey. Next slide, please. We were also able to provide risk assessment and corrective actions immediately offline by creating static content with risk assessment and corrective actions. We then applied skip logic to show content depending on the combination of answers. In this example, this particular assessment of major risk for herbicides will be shown if farmer answered application of synthetic herbicide to control weeds and application within two years and more than 30% of the farm. Next slide, please. This is another example showing minor risk for other topics. The risks and corrective actions are placed on the last portion of the survey, as this will be discussed by the agent to the farmer. Next slide, please. This is an example of how it looks like in TireWorks. You can see the flow from observation where certain questions are asked for the section on weed management. Then to evaluation and recommendation where risks and corrective actions are provide, provided at the end of the survey itself. Let me pause again here for any questions. Okay, uh, moving on. 
One important, uh, can you move to the next slide? One important point of this inspection is the linkage to the former records in the system. To see how it looks like in the application, upon starting inspection job, selection of former to be inspected must be done. Inspection officer can verify details with the farmer before proceeding with the inspection. Next slide, please. To piece it all together, inspection officer is able to see the list of farmers from Salesforce on their TireWorks application using drill down feature. Parts of the farmer profile are downloaded to their tablets, making it available offline. Inspection officer proceeds with the actual observation, evaluation, and recommendation with the tool. Once the inspection officer syncs the completed survey, the organic inspection form is linked to the former profile via relationship set in the Tireworks survey and Salesforce. Next slide, please. Because of these established relationships, Results of organic inspection are available in the farmer profile page. This serves as a great way to view farmer history and status. Through, through this page, we can easily answer questions like, how ready is this farmer for organic certification? When was the last inspection for this farmer? Who conducted it? And wh what were the results? Next slide, please. This is a sample look on how the inspection record looks like in Salesforce. This would then be the start of point of the monitoring component of the process. Next slide, please. Um, next. As part of monitoring, we want to be able to highlight the areas that need improvement. Similar to organic inspection, Tireworks skip logic was utilized in order to show corrective action recommended during previous inspection. Tireworks also allows pre-filling of these data, which allows us to do customized monitoring per farmer. The whole suite can be utilized to assure that once a farmer is certified, he stays certified throughout continuous monitoring, through continuous monitoring. So next slide, please. Next slide. Um, so what happens after? What ha so what happens next after inspection? Supervisor will have a listing view of farmers without risks, which will then be for approval of manager for third party certification. Supervisors will also have listing of farmers with follow up re inspection and can do appropriate action. They can even set up group trainings for commonly encountered risks. In addition, supervisor will have a records of farmers with major risk, which can still be source of, of conventional coconuts. Most importantly, farmers who have successfully undergone certification will have better access to markets and increase in income. Um, next slide, please. So for anyone participating in this webinar who is interested in doing something similar, here are some tips on what worked well during our development. Before actually starting creating the tools, we had to have the criteria extracted. These are what worked well during that process. As compared to email exchanges, sit down with the partners for a face-to-face -face session was more effective. We got to explain well the expected output using existing example from Grameen's Uganda team. It was also effective that we got the quality assurance lead from the field as our subject matter expert in defining the criteria. As for the actual development in Tireworks and Salesforce, these would be our tips. Have a very good draft in Word or Excel, the formulas and skip logic before starting with actual objects in Salesforce and survey in TireWorks. This way, you can observe repeating options which can be set as global pick list. It is also easier to make corrections in the draft. 
do field tests as early as possible. We got feedback that during the manual process, assessment is done on the same day as inspection. This prompted the team to explore possibility of offline survey assessment without depending on thinking. Be consistent with naming fields. This will help when mapping and selecting fields for drill down. These lessons learned are also true for the program in Colombia, which will be discussed on the following slides. You might be asking, given all these, what are the benefits so far? Our partners is seeing doubling the agent productivity using the tools. We are also anticipating significant efficiency gains since a lot of evaluation and assignment of pre-inspection was done manually before. With that, I'd like to turn it over back to Carlos, who will be discussing how we are expanding the application of certification in the programs in Latin America. Hannah, I have a couple questions for you, actually, before Carlos gets started. Um, Question is, how many farmers are certified, um, maybe just through the FarmerLink program, through this process? So, so far, um, the actual inspection has not yet um, started. We just did field testing. The inspection will start in April, but we are targeting around, um, if I remember correctly, around 450 farmers. Okay, great. And, and do you have an estimated cost per farmer? That is also still under, um, what is, we are still evaluating the cost by, by doing the evaluation of the activity-based costing. Okay, thanks. Any other questions before we move on to sort of um, the advanced certification process? Okay, I think that's it. Um, Carlos. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Hannah. Um, I want to, to give you a brief resume of LAC Coffee Project. Gramin Foundation has a strong experience with experience with coffee growers in Latin America. We have implemented coffee projects in Guatemala and Colombia, along them with cooperatives with at least 1,000 farmers. The American continent has the first position in coffee production. In the country ranking, Colombia has the third position and Guatemala the 11th. 70% of the coffee growers are below national poverty line, and the average income is 56% of the minimum salary established by the government. We really believe that working with the small coffee farmer along a process for certification preparation will be useful for them and their cooperatives to obtain certain certification and increase the incomes and livelihood of this economic sector. In the next slide, we will see the first part of the advanced process certifications. These are the certification seals that we include in our approach. We are aware that each certification has lots of requirements and it's, and it's not appropriate to put it them all together, but we try to obtain the more relevant aspect of each one and include them in an integrated solution. We found that these certifications have similar goals, like give assurance that the working condition is safe and healthy, offer transparency throughout the supply chain, fight for children's rights and deforestations, guarantee that farmers have been trained to implement better farming practices, and build a strong forests and healthy communities. This is the beginning of the next slide topic that is survey design process. The survey design process is driven to obtain the most possible information about farmer, family members, 
farms, production, good agricultural practices, and meet the requirements of multiple certifications, at least the more relevant subjects. We have found that one question can apply to several certification requirements. For example, a question related to higher underage people in the farm required, I'm sorry, um, a question related to higher underage people in the farm applied to cafe practices, youth, fair trade, rainforest alliance, and 4C. We have designed each survey supported by agronomy specialists in certification processes. So each question is evaluated to see if it meets a specific certifications. With farmers and farms data collected, we can determine if a farmer is closer to obtain a specific certification. We can see in the next slide part of the outcome of this effort. After we collect all the information using TaraWorks, we create a farmer profile with key data. For example, recommendations to improve the production, quality, and certifications. We calculate level of production and with data like the age of the trees, density, soil analysis, we can give advices to improve the production. The same happens with the quality of the product. Regarding two certifications, we calculate the level and the percentage of practices that the farmer satisfy and present a list of practices that needs to be accomplished in order to get ready for applying to a certification seal. These outcomes are very helpful for the cooperative because they can create certification programs based on the farmer that has good assessments, find deals with certification bodies, and identify which farmers need more help to improve some processes or agricultural practices. Even with that information, we create content, training sessions, and different programs to support the farmers and cooperatives. And this is the process to drive the farmers into multiple, multiple certification programs in Latin America. Thank you. Next slide. Okay, this is the question session. Thank you for your attendance. Thanks, Carlos. Thanks, Hannah. Um, great. So please uh, ask your questions in the Q&A window um, or in the chat. I have a couple questions. Um, I guess I had this question for Hannah, but maybe it's relevant for both. Where do the agents typically come from, the people who are, um, you know, inspecting and interfacing with the farmers? Um, can I start with answering that? Um, sure. For, okay. So for the farmer link program, we have um, partners both from the private sector and the government. So the agents come from these um, partners of the program. Okay. And in 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 the LAC projects, we normally have. Um, the model that is called CKIWs, uh, that, uh, that there are farmers that the community select and we trained in our tools. And there are other agents that are the, the technicians that belong to the, to the cooperatives. So we normally work with, with both kind of agents. Okay, great. And then how, do, how has the training been done? Um, because there's sort of a technical aspect of it um, for, you know, how to use TerraWorks, but also a content, um, you know, the, the actual understanding of the corrective actions. Um, how does the training work for these programs? Um, okay, um, for the farmer link program, trainings actually happen every quarter. 
so we we hold them with the agents training them both on the um, soft skills as well as the technical skills um, I think one important point also to share is that during this training we also make this an avenue for the agents agents themselves to share some of the um, experiences and I guess best practices that they have um, gained during the process so that the others learn from um, these agents. Great. Thanks. Um, Cecilia, I see that you have a question. I'm going to unmute you if you could just uh, introduce yourself before you ask your question. Um, hi, my name is Cecilia Blostein. I'm over at Gesto for Social Impact Investors Investing in uh, SMEs in Africa. Um, and my question is, so we're very much interested in certification. And um, my question is, our partners, uh, we invest in SMEs, so they're unlikely to afford or have Salesforce. So I'm just not sure what we could recommend they use as an alternative for all of this to still work. Thanks, Cecilia. Maybe I can take a first stab at that. Um, so I know for Salesforce, they have the um, Salesforce Foundation arm, which has a Power of Us program. So if there are um, organizations that have a, a social mission that they can point to, typically on their um, registration form or something, um, then they are eligible for 10 free um, enterprise licenses, which gives back-end access. Um, so if you're building the surveys, if you're creating the reports, that's when you would typically use that. Um, and then for the actual mobile users, it is a separate, um, it's not a Salesforce um, enterprise license charge. But I think it would, might depend on the type of um, organization. Um, we kind of need to look at the, the legal um, setups. Okay, thank you. Hannah or Carlos, have you um, kind of looked into that aspect um, of programs when you're deciding on Salesforce and TerraWorks? I'm, I'm sorry, Lynn. Can you repeat the question, please? Yeah, so the question was around the cost of Salesforce. Um, I know for your programs, you qualify for the free licenses, um, but was that a consideration when you're looking or when you're deciding on Salesforce and TerraWorks, were there alternatives that you looked at? Okay, in, in our pro in our experience in, in Latin America for the partners are very interested in the the power of us license. So they, they normally normally um do the diligence to get that free license and and obviously that reduces the cost. And Yeah, I think um, all of the programs have qualified for it. Um, so it's essentially um, free Salesforce. Okay. Well, thank you. I guess I will research about um, how to how to get to that uh, how to qualify for that Power of Us program. Okay. Um, but they're businesses, so I really doubt that will qualify. <laughs> thank you. Okay. I can follow up with you as well to. Um, See what the options are. Thanks for the question. Sure. Um, and I have another question um, about how did you come up with the corrective actions um, for the FarmerLink program? 
Thank you for that question. For the corrective actions, um, as mentioned in the um, what worked well, we had the uh, help with the uh, lead quality assurance uh, from our private partner. So um, they are also aware of the risk as, well as the corrective actions that they recommend to the farmers because actually they they do this manually. We we just had to extract how that decision process was made. So the corrective actions um, is based on the risks that were uh, identified for the certain farmer and um, these were um, validated with a quality assurance lead. Oops, sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> I should totally ask that question to myself. Um, Carlos, another question for you is around the certification list. Um, you had the slide of, of the multiple certifications. For the different partners like Andes or Anserma, how do you decide uh, which certifications um, they need, or is, do they come to you with the list of certifications they need? Okay, thank you, Elaine. Um, um, in the process, the, the cooperative is the one that, that choose what are the certification sales that they want to, to accomplish. And so with the, with the project, we gave them all the information that they need to know what is the status of the farmer of the cooperative and what is the percentage that they have and what is the remaining uh, practices or percentage that they need to to get um, a certification. So at the end, it's the cooperative or the uh, sales department who decide what are the, the certifications. Okay, great. Um, I think that's it for the questions. Um, if there are any questions uh, as a follow-up, you have our emails listed on the, the slide here. Um, otherwise, I think we'll just wrap up early and give everyone some time back. So thanks, everybody, for joining, and thanks, Hannah and Carlos, for taking us through your processes. Thank you, Isla. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thanks. Bye.